we should talk today about what it would take to become a Bitcoin top one percenter or top 10 percenter. So a lot of people have very bullish targets on Bitcoin, whether it's 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, 1 million per Bitcoin. And if it hits those numbers, it's going to be really important to have a sizable position in it. So what would it take to make you among one of the top 1% in Bitcoin, one of the top 10%? I think it's going to be important to take a look at that. So we're going to look at this article here today. Want to be rich? Bitcoin's limited supply cap means you only need one one hundredth of a Bitcoin. So if you guys don't mind just hitting the like button before we start, I really appreciate that. It helps out the channel. Please hit subscribe while you're down there too. Well, purchasing one hundredth of a Bitcoin might only cost you $500 today. Current trends in the global wealth distributions and inevitable realization of Bitcoin's limited supply could result in one one hundredth of a Bitcoin being worth $1 million in the future. Wow, that, that's pretty bullish there. So 51.9 million individuals with a net worth uh, surpassing $1 million. This was in 2020. The index considers a person's net worth, including their financial and real estate assets. 1% of the world's global population uh, holds about 43% of the world's wealth. And then you can see how it's broken down with about 4.4 thousand people with over half a billion dollars. Bitcoin's total supply consists of 18.6 million BTC, leaving 2.37 million coins to be mined. In 10 years, it will reach 20.6 million BTC. Now, 1.9 million coins haven't been touched for over a decade. Now, a lot of this is due to people just losing them or people holding forever. A lot of it, though, is due to lost coins. If you've seen those articles about you know someone that lost their thumb drive and they threw it away in the trash... And now they're going through dumps. That's something that's come out. There, there are a lot of people that have just lost it from uh, old hard drives or thrown it out or whatever. They don't have passwords anymore. So once you take these 1.9 million coins out, it leaves about 0.37 Bitcoin per millionaire, including the ones yet to be mined. However, if you remove the Bitcoin that have not been touched for five years or less or five years or more, a maximum of only 14.57 million Bitcoin will be available for accumulation. In this scenario, the world's millionaires could only own 0.28 Bitcoin each, assuming supply is evenly distributed. Now, what's interesting is there's still a lot of individuals that own you know, or have a net worth over 100,000. So 100,000 to a million accounts for another 40% of the world's wealth. So this is the world's wealth here. This is the percentage. So the majority of the wealth is in the top 1%, and then the top 10% own a good majority more. Actually, it's about 11.4%. And then 34% of it owns about 15%. And then the bottom group here, over half the world, only own or only have about 1.4% of the world's wealth. So obviously not distributed evenly. But if you start looking at this, it, it gets quite interesting. Assuming the global wealth proportion shown in the chart above states the same millionaires represent 6.32 million coins which means that each individual would have to purchase about 0.12 bitcoin each the remaining 590 million individuals currently worth a hundred thousand dollars or more could effectively hold 5.9 million coins re resulting in a mere 0.01 bitcoin per adult so this is starting to get really interesting to be in the top, about the top 12.4% of individuals in the world to hold Bitcoin, you would have to have 0.01 Bitcoin. Now, this also isn't taking into account the fact that some people hold a lot more, right? So again, these are averages, but some of the top billionaires hold thousands and thousands and thousands of Bitcoin, not 0.12. They hold thousands of Bitcoin. So... What's that mean? That the number is actually going to go down less. So assuming, let's say, one person holds, I don't know, holds 10,000 Bitcoin, it's going to drastically lower how many Bitcoin each people each person gets. Now, maybe not one person holding 10,000 Bitcoin because that would only knock this down to 6.31. But, you know, 100 people that hold 10,000 Bitcoin really knocks that down a little bit. To conclude, buying 0.1 or 0.01 Bitcoin today, roughly a $500 investment at current prices, can assure 
one in the top 13% of holder position. Now, is this is this advice to go buy Bitcoin? No, I can't give financial advice. However, I will say I own enough to be in any of these top brackets that they're talking about. So I own enough Bitcoin. I am at about 0.42 Bitcoin between the two different brokers that I have that I would be in the top 1% of Bitcoin holders. Now, I think that there's a case to be made for owning more. I would love to own over a Bitcoin, more than one Bitcoin, and I am putting more money into Bitcoin pretty regularly right now. Now, one thing that I really like, and you know, I, I think we should probably take a look at what it means to have 0.28 Bitcoin, because again, that's a number that most people throw out there. That'd be $11,000 right now. 0 0.01 would be only $386 right now. Now, I have the majority of my Bitcoin in BlockFi. I also hold some in Voyager, but BlockFi pays an interest rate. So I do get an interest rate on my Bitcoin. Just last month, we can take a look at how much Bitcoin I received. I received 0 0.001 to Bitcoin. So just this year, I'll make over 0 0.01 Bitcoin, about 0 0.014 Bitcoin, which would put me uh, even higher up. Again, if you're talking about this being a million dollar asset, that's a significant amount of money. I mean, we're talking about over $1,000 a month in Bitcoin interest on just about $10,000 right now. Now, of course, I could be wrong, right? If, if Bitcoin doesn't hit a million dollars, it's not going to be as significant. But one other thing that I like about BlockFi is the fact that if it does go up, they actually allow you to borrow against your crypto which is nice. You don't have to withdraw it, create taxable events. If Bitcoin goes up 10x from here, I don't have to get taxed like crazy, especially if I'm still earning an income. I can get a, a loan against my crypto, which is going to be really nice. It provides some liquidity and it means I don't have to take those taxable events. Now, overall, I think holding crypto in a place like BlockFi or Voyager is great. I think uh, especially BlockFi, I own the majority of my crypto on BlockFi. I really like it. Again, just because it does pay that interest rate, which will be huge, assuming crypto goes where people expect it to go. This could be life-changing money, right? So let's treat it that way and get some interest, in my opinion. There's a link underneath the video. If you guys do want to sign up for it, you can use the link down there to get a bonus too, up to $250 worth when you deposit money. But overall, this is what it takes to become a Bitcoin top one percenter and a top 13 percenter 10 years down the line. So in 2031, will we be looking back and saying, man, I really wish I had 0.01 Bitcoin? If you don't have any now, I think probably. If you have some now and in 10 years you're looking back, you might wish that you had 0.28 or maybe you want one Bitcoin. I mean, 10 years from now, if you hold one Bitcoin right now, you might be a millionaire. Who knows? Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for hitting the like button and subscribing down below. Check out that link down below to BlockFi. Thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.